What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. Really appreciate you joining me as we continue working on the BMW 328i xDrive manual. Well, as you saw in the last video on this car, got the entire exterior done. It's all put back together. Has a few new bling options like the wheels and the spoilers in the back, and she's looking really good. Well, it is time to go ahead and start reassembling, cleaning up and reassembling the interior and um, well, as you can see behind me, the weather's not being real cooperative. Not only is it cold, it's snowy and wet and nasty out here. So Jack has been kind enough to let me bring the car over to his shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack up some stuff, get some junk out of the car, first of all, pack up some of the things I'm gonna need to put this interior back together. Then I'm gonna take the car over to Jack's and we're gonna go ahead and get to work getting this interior put back together, getting it ready for Erica to start driving it as her daily driver. So, with that being said, let me get to work packing stuff up and let's get going. Alrighty, we are back over at Jack's shop where this car was just a short while ago getting painted and all of his body work repaired. Uh, anyway, super cool of Jack to allow me to use his shop, which is heated, uh, of course indoors, uh, to work on rebuilding the interior of the car while the weather outside is nasty. Thanks so much, Jack, if you're watching this. Really appreciate you. Anyway, guys, I need to get the car emptied out. I've got uh, most of the interior that needs to be reinstalled in there and a few other odds and ends for cleaning and all of that So I need to go ahead and get it emptied out open everything up get ready and get set up And then I'm gonna get right to work getting this interior installed Alrighty then. Well, a little status update. I have gone through and vacuumed the whole thing out, which should not be confused with being fully clean, uh, but it is certainly a lot cleaner than it was. And I have also gone through and on all of the doors, I have gotten uh, all the wiring and uh, the uh, inner panels uh, all ready to go. And uh, on, I've got new tape on there, uh, holding the inner door panels on, the vapor barriers, whatever we call those. And so I've done that on all four doors. Uh, that one had to be replaced altogether. This one just had to be put back on. Those never came fully off, but they were loose. Uh, so I've got all that ready to go. I've already tacked in uh, all of the um, pieces down here along the floorboards, the kick place or whatever. And I've also gotten the inner weather strip put onto this door. So basically at this point, ready to start putting on door panels. Now over here in my pile of parts, uh, it looks worse than it is. Trust me. I was very careful with everything uh, But I actually have more door panels than I have doors in this car Actually, I have twice as many door panels as I have uh, doors in this car I had several in this car that were uh, in pretty rough shape been damaged by uh, Hard life prior to me getting it and I got a great deal on um, a set of uh, black door panels for the car. So I've got four brand, well, they're not brand new, but four uh, replacements. So I'm just gonna go through, since I've got duplicates of every single one of them, figure out which one I like the best, which one's in the best shape, and install that one uh, on the car. So that's what I'm gonna start working on now, is installing these inner door panels, and then I'm gonna move on to installing uh, the trunk, uh, the inner trunk liners. So let's keep going. guys another status update here i have both of the inner door panels on the driver side excuse me the passenger side installed and functional um, i haven't buttoned them up yet because i'm probably gonna end up taking them back off i'm missing a bunch of clips and i'd really like them to be clipped uh, onto the doors a little bit more firmly i do have the screws in there so they're not going anywhere uh, but don't want any rattles or anything like that so uh, i'm not going to bother putting on uh, the rest of the trim there but they are functional and it looks a lot better 
Now back here, I do have the door panel on the front installed, um, but I don't have the rear one on. And I have it right here, but the reason I haven't installed it is I'm missing some hardware. Amongst the many clips that I'm still missing, um, I'm also, I'm sure it's at my house somewhere, but the uh, door pole that goes on here, uh, I had this one, but I was missing one on the front door. Decided the front door was more important, so I put that one there. I need to find the door pole. Uh, and then I'm also missing a few screws and obviously the clip still. So I'm just gonna leave this panel off altogether. So I've got three of them more or less installed. One of them not installed at all. I'm gonna go ahead and get these back seats installed now, but uh, before I do that, let me take you over there and let you see what I'm working with. Alrighty then, not gonna be much to look at here. This is a seat bottom. It's exactly like the one that came out of the car, uh, but the reason I have a, a new one is because I bought this, which is a split folding rear seat. And uh, this car only came with a solid rear seat. Uh, so I went ahead and bought one from the same guy I got the door and the other, uh, the, the dog leg section from Straight Six Auto out in California. Um, got that from him. Uh, so this is a split folding rear seat, which will make that area a whole lot more usable. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started installing that. Really, aside from needing the parts, there's nothing different. It all bolts in exactly the same way. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get going on that and hopefully have five seats fully functional and installed uh, by the time I'm done. Let's keep going. All right, guys, it is another day. And as you saw just a moment ago, I left off working on the rear seat of the car. I didn't really end anything uh, as far as the video is concerned because I was tired, I was frustrated, and I realized I installed something wrong, which means it doesn't fit properly. So I'm gonna have to take some work apart that I already did, but that's okay. We learn from our mistakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that rear seat back taken back off. I need to go ahead and replace the latches. That was one of the other things. Uh, when you go ahead and install the split folding rear seat versus the fixed back that this came from, uh, you have to replace the latch. And of course the new latch also comes with uh, the release mechanism that goes here uh, in the trunk. I also didn't have the buckles for the, the seat bottom that the uh, belts plug into. So I had to gather all those things together. So I'm gonna start by taking that uh, seat back out um to fix what i did before i put it back in though i'm gonna go ahead and replace uh these latches i'm gonna make sure my buckles are in place and ready to go and then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall that seat back properly and um after i've done all of that i'll get into some more things uh that we've got going for the car today like finishing up uh that one door panel i finally got the extra hardware i needed so i'm gonna wrap that up and get the rest of the door panels installed uh so those can be considered to be done and then we can get onto some fun stuff as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys back on the tripod. I'm gonna get to work undoing what I've already done and then starting over again and doing it correctly. Let's go. and with much wrestling there's the rear seat i'll pull the headrests off the old seat bag and put those in there momentarily but there is our rear seat fully installed and if we come back here you can see we've got the releases back here so we now have split folding rear seats in our e90 Woohoo! so if you're tackling this project putting in the split folding rear seats or really any other project, just be aware when there's two of something, they're usually different if they're on opposite sides of the car. They're probably mirror images of each other. Don't know if you noticed in the time lapse what happened, but I got, I went through the trouble of getting these uh, release mechanisms installed 
and I realized that I had the wrong lever on the wrong side of the car. And yes, it makes a difference. So I had to undo it all, redo it. Of course, I learned how to do it at that point, so it went a little faster, but still extra work that I would not have had to have done if I had to just pay a little bit closer attention. So learn from my mistakes, if you will. I usually learn the hard way. <laughs> Thumbs up if you're the same way. Anyway, now that the rear seat is fully installed, fully functional and behind us, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to some other things. I'm gonna start by going ahead and putting that last door panel in so that it is fully installed, don't have to think about it anymore. And then we'll move on to some other odds and ends. Let's keep going. Alrighty guys, got the door panel put in back here in the back and everything's working now, so that's good. Uh, you saw me fooling with that front door. I had actually taken the uh, cable that goes from the ha inside handle to the latch out of this door and put it in that door just so that the front door would work. Um, but they're not technically the same thing. I made it work, but it's not technically the same. So I got the replacement for that one and then put the other one back in here. That's why I was fooling with that door had to unplug my battery i'll get to that in a minute uh so now i'm having issues with uh my wind is not working again but we'll cross that bridge here in a little while uh meanwhile i moved on to an item of repair uh trying to figure out why the hvac blower doesn't work uh, it doesn't matter what fan speed you set it at um, it'll register that you've you know adjusted it up or down but it doesn't actually blow. So I've been researching it. There's a lot of different things. And uh, so I start looking up underneath here to see if I can figure out why. Pulled off this lower panel. And let me see if you can see that. Here, let's zoom in for you. Oh, yeah. Nice and toasty and corroded, which means it probably happened a while ago. And uh, so, and so I started doing a little bit of research and found out that there is actually a recall uh, for the fan blower wiring because it can cause a fire. Uh, looks like this car came mighty close and thankfully recalls aren't superseded by a car having been in an accident or having been salvaged. It is a car that is still on the road and BMW is still obligated to fix it under recall. So this car will be going to BMW to have that wiring fixed and the blower probably replaced since it's kind of charred the, uh, the bottom of the blower as well. And uh, well, that'll be nice because then we'll actually have heat in this car uh, here in this nice cold winter. Anyway, now that we've found that fun little tidbit and uh, found out that it's their responsibility instead of mine, I am going to go ahead and move on now to something a little bit more fun. All right, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and get into here is the steering wheel. Now, this car is a non-sport package car, so it's got uh, the regular old plain steering wheel, it's got the non-sport seats, so on and so forth, um, but all of that stuff is pretty well plug and play. And so I found not only a sport steering wheel, but actually an M Sport steering wheel. Again, this came from uh, Straight Six Auto, and what's kind of cool about this one is it doesn't have the paddle shifters. This car being a manual, of course, paddle shifters wouldn't work anyway. So finding an M Sport steering wheel with no paddle shifters because it came off of another car with a manual transmission is an awesome find. Of course, it's got the replacement steering or airbag uh, to replace that one. So I'm going to go ahead and start the process of getting this old airbag and steering wheel out. And uh, then we'll go ahead and pop the new one in. Hopefully this won't take too long. It seems like it's a fairly straightforward process other than sometimes popping the airbags can be a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and get started and see how hard it is or isn't. Ta-da! It's a little tricky, but it's not too bad. I mean, I've certainly spent a lot more time than that trying to get an airbag out of a car before. So there we go, airbag out. That's a 16 millimeter nut there in the middle. So I'll go ahead and take that out now too, or rather it's a bolt, not a nut. Gonna need an extension, give me just a second. 12 seconds later. All 
right. Clock spring unplugged. <laughs> that was easy. All right. There it is. <clears throat> well, it looks weird without a steer wheel, doesn't it? Anyway, old one out. Let me go ahead and get the airbag popped out of the sport steering wheel, which based on my research might be a little bit trickier. But let me go ahead and do that and I'll report back as we're getting ready to put it back in the car. Alrighty, and there we go. Airbag removed from the sport steering wheel. It's not really too bad. Uh, just like in uh, the uh, original, there are a couple of holes on either side. Uh, they're kind of obscured by a flap of leather, so uh, look closely uh, and just go in at a little bit of an angle uh, very carefully. It really doesn't need to, the screwdriver doesn't need to go in very far uh, and you'll find a little, uh, a little push wire in there. It's uh, right there uh, and you're just basically pushing that in to release it and out it comes. So I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the rest of the wiring from the back of the airbag and attach it here because I need to attach this little ground wire here uh, into the steering wheel. Uh, but after I do that, we'll go ahead and uh, slap it into the car. Let's keep going. All right. Very easy to center a steering wheel on a BMW because there's a little bitty uh, mark on the uh, actual wheel itself as well as one on the shaft. You just line them up and in it goes. Boom. Simple as that. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and plug these into the clock spring. And then we'll get that bolt in there. Always recommend you start it by hand and make sure everything, all the threads are lining up. Because I have certainly lined things up before I thought and just tried to drive it in with, a, with an impact or something. And cross-threaded it badly. Ask my buddy Doug. He and I have had some experience with that. Anyway, uh, it's in there by hand and it's threaded nicely, so let's go ahead and tighten it down. There we go. There's probably an actual torque spec for that, but a friend of mine told me when you don't know the torque spec, use the German torque spec. And this is a German car, so I'll use the German torque spec. What's the German torque spec, you ask? Guten Tag. <laughs> anyway, go ahead and hook up this airbag. Power is off to the car, it's the battery's unplugged. So let me go ahead and plug this in, pop the airbag in, and we're done. Just a few minutes, really. One of the uh, clips on top pop down, so I just want to loosen that back up. There we go. Okay, back at it again here. And there's only one way these things can go in, so you cannot line them up wrong. There we go. Boom. And there it is. Sport steering wheel installed. And man, doesn't it look good. So much better than uh, the old steering wheel. I'll tell you, it really dresses it up and it also feels so good. This steering wheel, it's meatier. It has these uh, grips for your thumbs uh, to hold on to. And I think in general, it's just a better looking steering wheel. And of course this one is fun because it has uh, the M logo on there. There you go, M Sport. We took a 328i and turned it into an M Sport. Sorta. Anyway guys, that is where we're gonna end it for this video. There is plenty more to do. Uh, we've got most of the actual buttoning up done. The trunk's put together, all the door panels, the rear seat. We've just uh, changed out our nice sport steering wheel and it looks so much better. And I've actually got some more fun things coming uh, that'll go along with this nice M Sport steering wheel to help dress up the car. Some things that'll make it a little more personal, a little more fun, uh, maybe a little more comfortable along the way as well. So we've made fantastic progress. I hope you'll stay 
tuned for the next video where we'll have some more things coming on the personalization and upgrades to the car. In addition to that, stay tuned because I'll have a video coming soon on a potential problem I've found with this car. And I don't mean just that uh, burned up wiring there on the blower motor. I mean, I've actually got something else that might cost me some actual time, labor, and money. Uh, some damage that I did not know was there. So stay tuned for that and wish me luck. I'll have more information coming in a video real soon on that as well. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Really appreciate you all. Stay tuned. We'll see you in the next episode.